with um, going to opportunities. So we're gonna go to opportunities first because that is where, um, oh, you couldn't hear me. I'm sorry, so let me start over. Um, we're gonna be starting inside this command. Sorry about that, Zoom. Um, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that DocuSign is connected. So from inside of your command, you wanna click on your name at the top right, and you wanna click on settings. And like I said, once you click on settings, you should be able to see DocuSign there at the top that lets you know that it is connected. This also shows you everything that is connected to your command. Um, if you'd like to learn more about that, we have classes about what you can connect to your command and how it can enhance your um, experience as you go through. So if you're connected, we're gonna go ahead and start an opportunity. Now you're probably asking why we're starting an outside opportunities for the DocuSign class. The reason I'm doing that is because I wanna show you how these two are connected. And again, I wanna hammer home the importance of making sure that you're coming into command to make these rooms as well as loops for dot loop um, through command because it connects them, allows them to communicate. Um, and when it comes to compliance, like I said, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to bring those documents in instead of you having to download and resubmit over and over again. You can just do a couple of clicks and it'll actually put them into your, um, your, your document section. So I'm gonna get started by starting a new opportunity. To do so, all you're gonna do is click on the create opportunity button. Does everybody see that on the right hand side? And we're gonna go ahead and fill out the basic information that is needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a buyer here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my name. Um, as I've said in previous classes, it's always a good idea to have your name, uh, your yourself as a client inside of your contacts. Um, the way that command is uh, and is and supposed to work is that you have to have those contacts inside of your database to do some of these things uh, because it pulls out information over it. It, it um, brings over contact information, stuff like that, to bring it over into DocuSign and to DotLoop. So make sure that you have at least yourself. Um, if you don't want to put yourself in there, you can always make a test contact and literally name it test, and it'll still allow you to do some of the stuff. So I'm going to use myself here. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the basic information. And I'm going to click on create. So once you click on create, you should have a details claim that looks something like this. Everyone kind of put your hand up if that's what you see on your screen right now. All good? Cool, so once you're in here, this is just like we've talked about before in the opportunities classes. Um, this, is, this is your opportunity. This is where you're gonna do everything um, with this client uh, as we move forward to the process. So the, for compliance, for commissions, stuff like that. Of course, we do have classes for those two, but the main one we're gonna be focused on today is the documents tab right there in the middle. So we're going to go ahead and click on documents. <clears throat> and you're going to notice that's going to be kind of blank. So to get an idea of what documents that you need inside of here, you're going to want to click on a pick checklist type over here on the left hand side. It's going to give you a drop down menu that allows you to choose three um, pre made ones already right now. As I've said in previous classes, we are still finalizing those lists um, for construction and farm and ranch and those other ones, um, we need to make sure that it is a um, end all list of those documents needed. So that's why it's taking us a little bit of time to get that done. Um, but for this case, we're gonna use residential. Once you click on residential, you notice it's gonna go ahead and give you um, those folders on the left side over there. So we have a consultation under contract and close on the left side over there. Um, you'll notice that it's gonna be broken down so consultation is your consultation that you have with your buyers. So this is where you can put your buyer presentation, stuff like that to keep track of it. Under contract, this is where you're gonna put all of your contract uh, paperwork. In this case, this is a buyer. This is where you're gonna put all information at. And then below that is going to be your closed. Now, to get documents started and get put in here, you're gonna go ahead and click on the start a transaction button on the right hand side. Does everybody see that? So if you have both of them connected like I do, you will have the opportunity to choose either DocuSign or DotLoop. If you only have one or the other connected, um, once you click on it, it's going to go ahead and go through that phase that whatever it is. So for example, if it's DocuSign, it's going to go ahead and go to DocuSign. If it's DotLoop, it's going to go and ask you to choose a template um, to be able to choose which one you want. So in this case, we're doing DocuSign since this is DocuSign class. So I'm going to click on DocuSign. 
The one thing you're going to notice when, it, when I do that, it's going to open up a brand new tab. So now we are in DocuSign, so DocuSign Rooms. And with inside of command, you've noticed now that start a transaction is now a go to transaction and a sync transaction. So that's how you know that this is connected to a room or a loop. That's that's the talk, that's the how, how you tell that it's connected. Now, if you ever need to go in here and go to one of those, all you need to do is click on go to transaction and it's gonna take you into whatever program you're in. So for example, I can click on go to transaction. It's gonna open up a tab for the DocuSign room. You'll come in and go ahead and log in. Everybody right here so far? Everyone good? Your login should be your KW email and whatever password you set up. Yep. Yep. So um, if it shows it's connected inside of um, command, um, you should know your password because it, it asks you to make a password. If it doesn't say it's connected or you need to re-authenticate, that means you need to go back through and uh, connect that. If you need to do that, get with me either um, in person or get with me after class and we can get that hooked up. Um, but that, that's how that's how it's going to be you're logging in. You should already have a password and the user email. Yeah. So once you're in here, you'll notice the first thing right off the bat that's very different from dot loop. You'll notice that there's nothing in here. Is everyone see that? It's a blank canvas. There's nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go through these five tabs over here on the left hand side, right under the name. We're gonna go ahead and break those down and then I'm gonna show you how to bring some documents in here and get those ready to sign or get ready to send those to have signed. And then I'm also going to um, show you how to make some templates for your client. Does this sound good? Oh yeah, I gotta wake up now. Does this sound good? Sounds good. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. I uh, just, uh, I'll get with you after class because I can't get mine to connect. I mean, I went through the passwords uh, and, and connected it, but when I go to click the DocuSign, nothing comes up on the tabs. Uh, so that means you probably have um, the pop up blocker on. So whenever you do click on it, look on your search bar and make sure it doesn't say pop up blocked. If it does, click on that and say allow, uh, allow pop ups and it'll, it'll open up that tab for you. Thank you. Hmm? So we're gonna go ahead and break down these five tabs over here on the left. So the first one is the most important one um, in, this, uh, in this class. So as you're going through here, this is no different than the details section inside of Dot Loop. Um, how many of y'all love the um, autofill feature inside of Dot Loop? Everybody? So what if I told you that DocuSign has the exact same thing? But you don't even have to press a button to do it. So once you come in here, you want to fill in as much information as you can about this client and this transaction. So whenever you click on edit, this is going to show you everything that you can fill in here to autofill these documents. Now you can do even title companies. So for example, this one says entity holding uh, entity holding earnest money. So that'll actually auto populate the title company. Um, there's also the contingencies. There's all kinds of different dates that will actually auto populate into the document. So if you put a document inside of that DocuSign room and it happens to have one of these spots on that document, it will automatically be on there when you open it up. There's no more hitting the autofill like you did in dot loop. It will actually auto populate it into that document if it's on there. You also notice too, since we open this up through command, that for example, I use myself as the uh, buyer here. And so it brought in the buyer information. So buyer number one is Joshua Beard. Here's his phone number, here's his business phone, here's his email. All his stuff is right there to send this out to him. And you didn't even have to put anything in other than it being in your database already. So you'll fill in everything here to make sure it auto populates on those documents. So you can rejoice, although it's not auto fill, I call it auto populate because regardless of what you put um, in there, it'll auto populate into the document if it's on there. So the next one we're going to go to is documents. 
We're gonna come back on this briefly, but this is where all of your documents are gonna be put. So whether it's signed, whether it's sent, um, anything like that, it'll be in this uh, section here. And we're gonna come right back to that one. For people, as of right now, um, this is more of just to show you who is in here. Um, with our experience, we haven't noticed that you have to put them in here as a person. Um, all you have to do is make sure that their contact information is inside of the opportunity and inside of the room. So make sure that that is done. But you don't have to technically put them in the room um, to make this happen. Next one is envelope. This is what you'll see that your documents being sent out. So anytime that you either send one document or a couple of documents, it makes an envelope. So anytime you send anything out for signatures, they call it an envelope, regardless of what's in there. Um, it's very important that when you're in those, uh, those envelopes and you exit out or you save and exit, uh, maybe you got caught up and you need to go do something else before you finish the paperwork, make, make, make sure that you come in and go back to your envelopes and make sure you don't have a draft in there of what you're trying to do. Because if you keep creating drafts and then you try to send it out to one person and not the other, it'll cause an issue. We did have a, a agent here that did that. So there was multiple drafts in there and he sent this one out and he also sent this one out. One client signed this one, but not the other. The, on the other one, the other, the husband signed it out the wife. So make sure that you're going through and you're using the same draft that you started. Don't, don't keep creating drafts of the same thing. So if you're ever in envelopes and you exit out, it makes a draft. Always come to your envelope and make sure it's in there. Yes, yeah, just like just like um, Gmail that we have right now, we're typing, we exit out, it saves it as a draft, the same thing happens in here. Yeah, just make sure you go in there and check it because you don't want to have a whole room full of envelopes that are drafts. Um, a message is something that's tied to the peoples. Um, you can actually chat with your clients in here. Um, I don't really advise connecting it to here uh, because they may ask you a question that may not actually be part of paperwork. It may be something about a house or something like that. And obviously, you don't want to miss that when they can sit there and call us, text us, or email us for a better response. And history. All this is going to show you is when you put doc or when you send documents out whether you change the details, when you receive a document back, something that needs to be signed. So those are the things it's gonna show you. It doesn't show you when you remove documents. Now, um, if you delete it, it does show deletes, but it doesn't show archive because it doesn't, it's not going anywhere, um, but it does show when you delete them. Yeah, you have to go inside of your settings on command. You have to make sure you connect it. If you're not going to connect it, I'll get with you after class and we'll connect it. Yeah. So we're going to click on documents here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to come into documents here. I'm going to go ahead and add in a document um, so that we can get ready for this to go over. So I'm going to go ahead and add a document. So we're going to click on the word add over here on the right hand side. Do you see that? It's one of the two blue buttons. We're going to click on add. Now when you click on here, you're going to have a couple of options. Um, I'm going to tell you brief briefly what they are. Um, but the one we'll be focusing on today is the DocuSign forms. Um, but when you click on add, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I want to click on the word document. Yeah. Um, so then you, you have the couple of options here. So yours should say computer, DocuSign forms, zip forms, Google Drive, Dropbox, and Box. Those are the ones you should have. Um, you can edit the show those if you don't want to. I chose not to have those two on there that I don't use. But those, those are the things you can bring it in. It's very important that if you're not using at least zip form that you are using the DocuSign forms because those are all the forms that are in here. That is also where you're going to make your templates, and that is where anything that you fill into details over there over by the name will auto populate into those documents. So if you use anything other than that, it will not use those details to fill in those documents. So with that being said, we're going to click on DocuSign Forms. Now, if this is your first time being in here and first time uh, 
messing with DocuSign, yours may look a little different. Does anybody else look different than what's on my screen right now? So yours probably has the Realtor logo and another association. So whenever you go in, you're gonna click on the Realtor logo. And it's gonna ask you to basically confirm uh, your, with your NAR number and your association. If you don't know your NAR number, rejoice, because right below that it says, don't know your NAR number and you can click there. You can put your last name in and your email and it will give you your NAR number. Below that, you're gonna confirm your association. Your association is gonna be Texas Association of Realtors. Once you click on that and confirm, you should get this window that I have right here on mine. And then that should be Yeah, and I have no idea where you're at. Yeah, you want to go scroll down and you're going to right on this one. You should be able to scroll down. On the next one. That should be confirmed. Everybody got the same thing I have on mine right now? You can copy that on there, make it easier. Take your mouse and just hide it. And then control T. And then go back to your back to your Yep, it's already saved. It's going to like control uh, And then put your number there. You're going to click there and put control V. You need to put your lesson there, and then that's going to be Texas Association. You're there. Everybody there? Everyone looks like their screens are there. Yeah, I'll get with you after class. You're at the very, very beginning. So I'll get with you, and I'll walk you through all this again. Um, so once this window pops up, this is where you'll be able to select any of the documents. Now, what's cool about this is it's broken up into two different ways. So we have DocuSign Form Library, and we have Docu DocuSign Form Groups. Library, if you go down, it's going to be broken down into your library. It's going to be broken down into PAR. It's going to be broken down into KW26, or if it's uh, Paraland, it'll be 289, I think's their number. Um, and then Texas Association of Realtors is the last one. This is all of those documents. So you'll be able to click in here and find those documents that you need, whether it be HAR or TAR, or if you need any of those KW26 specific uh, documents. Uh, as far as what documents are you looking for? So that's still going to be underneath HAR or TAR. KW26 is only going to be specific things that are for like W9, COVID-19, color mortgage, multiple listings, addendum. It's going to be stuff like that. It's not going to be. Right. It's not going to be like version now where you clock, you go to dot loop and you click on the version now and it was everything. Um, it's broken down into those, those groups now. The other one here now is the DocuSign form groups. And when you do that, now you have buyers, listings, landlords, and tenants. This is gonna be broken down into those specific transactions. So if you click on buyer, this is if you're wanting to put in a offer as a buyer. So you're gonna have your one to four, you're gonna have your third party, you're gonna have your amendments. So anything that you're wanting to do with a offer will be in here. Now I wanna do an asterisk on that is this does not include your initial buyer docs. So your IABS, your general information, uh, you don't know, notice uh, wire fraud that is not included in that. That is included in the 
uh, library section. So you have to search for those. So this is right here is only for offer specific. So when you're ready to make that offer, that's what these are. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in one of these documents. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a IABS. So I'm gonna to go to the Texas Association of Realtors. I'm gonna type in broker. And I'm gonna do the information about the broker services and I can add it. So what, what you need to do is you can search those or find any ones you want or you can do a select all um, or you can um, simply click on that little bubble on the left side of any of those documents. Once it's selected, you can hit add and it's gonna look just like mine. It's gonna drop that into your documents. So this is where your documents are gonna be. Does everybody have at least a document in there to kind of follow along as we go forward? Everybody good? Thumbs up. So you can choose anyone you want to. This is just going to be for demonstration purposes. So you can see some of these windows that you won't be able to see unless you are following along. So uh, whenever you get here, I want to really harp on this to make sure that we are doing this correctly. So if you as the agent want to make sure this document is filled out correctly, the only time that you can do that as the agent is right now. So when you're in this room and you click on this document from right here, you as the agent, this is where you're gonna do all of your, um, your filling out. So if you're filling the document out, getting ready to send it to your client, this is where you're filling it out. You're not filling it out towards the end before you send it to your client. Because if you start putting those colored um, boxes for them to fill out uh, or for you to fill out, depending on what color they're associated with, if it's the buyer or the seller, they can actually delete that. Not, not that they're wanting to, or they're trying to be malicious, but it, that is their box. So if that is only intended for uh, them filling out that information, not for us. So make sure as the agent that you're filling it out right here and that there is no colors. You're, you're typing in the information, whether you're typing in or using a template, this is where you as the agent are filling it out. Everybody good with that? I want to make sure that we remember that. Just click on the document. So you want to make sure that you're filling everything out here. Does everyone remember that? Yes. Yeah. As 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 it is now, you fill it out. Whatever you put in here stays on the document. If you want, if you want the information to stay, it needs to be put in here. Does that make sense? And it'll make a little bit more sense when I show you the part where you're not supposed to put it at, but. The main thing to remember here is just no colors. You don't see any yellow or blue or purple, whatever colors they use. So make sure when you're filling out documents, you don't see any colors, that you're just filling the document out just the way it is. So now you want to get ready to send this out to your client. So once it's done and filled out, you want to make sure that you select the document. So there's that one document that we want to send. So I'm going to hover over that document. And you'll see that there will be a little bubble that pops up at the top left. Does everybody see that? Right here, a little bitty bubble. You go ahead and click on that and you'll notice something change right in this area right here. As soon as I click on it, I have a little toolbar that pops up. Does everybody see that? Now, you want, it would make sense that the envelope would be the, the button you would click, but it's actually gonna be the button right next to it, which is the little pin. So where it says create an envelope. So you're going to create an envelope. And what this is going to do is get this ready to send this to your clients. So once you come in here, this is the envelope screen that I was talking about earlier that you want to make sure that if you exit out or you click on the save and close, that if you're here and you exit out, there should be a draft of the envelope you're working on. So make sure that if you close out and go do something and come back and want to finish it, 
make sure you check the envelopes tab before we start doing it all over again, because it might cause an issue with you trying to send documents. Now, once you're in here, this is where you can label everything um, for you to keep track of it. So for example, right there where it says envelope name at the top, you can change that name to exactly what's in this, this envelope. So if you're sending out the general, uh, the um, initial buyer docs, you can type in initial buyer docs and that'll show up on your site only. It won't show up on the um, buyer site. So you can keep track of inside of your envelopes, label on it what exactly the envelope is. Below that is gonna show you what document is in that envelope. So right here we have the um, information about broker services. Now, if you wanna add another document that is already in the room and ready to go, you would click on the room documents and you can actually bring that document in to this envelope as well. Uh, I'm gonna speak briefly on this versus use template. Don't get excited. That is not the template that you're thinking of. It's actually a completely different template on the e-signature side. Um, and it takes a lot of time for it to do it. Um, and I don't advise it just because it can uh, open up errors. Um, so that's what that is. Right below that is another uh, drop down menu, which allows you to bring other documents if you want to do that from the same thing from the other screen. So you can do this uh, uploading or Google Docs if you want to. Right below that is one that I'm getting a lot of questions on. I had a lot of questions over the weekend about it, was the add recipients to envelope. It's very, very important that whenever you add a recipient, that when you come in here and click on add, you're clicking the pre-tagged roles. What you're doing is you're telling who is on this document. So for example, if I click on this pre-tagged roles right here, I can tell the system who my seller one and seller two is because it's reading it from the IBS of the, sell, the listing document. So when I click on seller one here, I can check it and say that there is a seller one and I can tell that it is me as a seller one. Now it's going to associate seller one on that document as Joshua Beard, the seller. You won't have to put the, um, the initial box or the signature bars. It does it for you using the pre-tag roles. So once you add them in there, you click on add and it will show them there at the bottom. So that, those are the people that are in this envelope that can see this envelope. Now, for those of you that have TCs and stuff like that, you can absolutely add them in here by doing the email. Um, so you can do add a recipient and you can click on the email address. So once you click on email address, you can type in their email address and they will get a copy uh, of it if you need them to. Um, also, if you have a, a couple here, how many of you love in dot loop and they like to fight over trying to get in there and read the documents? You can actually do away with that in DocuSign. What you do is you utilize this little box over here, it's just one right now. Um, if you had two people, you'd actually be able to fill out one, two. And basically what that does is number two would not get anything until number one has gone through and signed all of their stuff. So it keeps everybody all together. Um, number one has the opportunity to read the documents the way they need to. And then Number two can read it after them. Makes sense. And you can do that. Uh, you can do that, or you can just put one on both of them, and both of them will get in there. But it will do the same thing. Dot loop is you can't be in there at the same time. So when number one signs everything, and number two something. Yeah, and I'm going to show you. It'll have a little um, have a little done. And they get done. And it shows on your side, and then it automatically sends it to them. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, you can if you're if you're one of the ones signing that document. Yeah, you would put yourself as the agent, and that way, when it gets signed, it'll come up in yours, and they can sign it. Right below that is going to be the message to recipients. All this is, if you want to change and make this a little more personal. You can change the subject from the please DocuSign to whatever you want it to be, as well as the email message. You can put anything in there. You can say, hi, um, this is Josh. We talked over the buyer documents. Here they are. If you want to go ahead and read over them, if you have any questions, let me know. You can put that all in there, and it'll show up in the email when sent. Once you get past this, you're going to go ahead and click on next at the top right. And this takes us to the 
part that I was mentioning earlier that we want to make sure that we're not putting information in there um, that we want to stay. So once this loads, this is going to be the add fields tab. So when you come in here, this is where you can add things that need to be on here that your clients are filling out um, or something that you have um, discussed with them that they need to choose from. So check boxes, stuff like that. Now you can see up here at the top left, it may be a little confusing since I'm using myself, but in this case, the yellow Joshua Beard is actually the uh, seller in this case. He is my client. So you'll notice anytime that I put one of these um, fields over here. So for example, let's say I forgot to put the, the broker information. So I can click on text and I can put it in there. But as I've said, that color is assigned to the seller. So if I put Keller Williams Clear Lake in there and my client didn't know what was going on, he could click on that and actually delete that. So this is the importance of what I was saying earlier. When you click on that document, you fill that information in. That's where we're filling that information at. This right here is purely if you're needing them to fill something out or check or um, put in anything that's over here on the left-hand side. So whether it be a name, email, anything that they need to fill out, this is where you're gonna put it. So you can do check boxes. So for example, there's the check boxes here. We put it over there. That check box is assigned. So this is where you're gonna add those things that need to be done by your clients. Everybody understand that? This is not where as agents we're filling it out. This is where as clients they're filling it out. So once you get done, you'll click on, you'll click on the send button. Now I want to point out the very bottom here, since I did use the pre-tagged roles, and I told them that it wasn't fired, you'll see that the um, boxes are already there for the initial and the time. That's because I use pre-tagged roles. It knows that the buyer needs to, or the seller needs to sign here. So it puts the things there for me. So it's very important that you use those pre-tagged roles. So once you get ready and you need to, uh, to send this, you're just gonna click on the yellow button up here where it says send. So we're gonna click on send. And this is gonna take you to your envelopes. So you'll notice here that it has an envelope and it's been sent. And it tells you that there's one person in there and there's one document. Now, why this is sent, does anybody have any questions up to this point? No? Cool. So this is gonna be very similar to dot loop. So whenever you click on it, and I'll try to make sure that I can give you screenshots of this, but it's gonna look just like it kind of does on dot loop, except now it says DocuSign. So I'm gonna review this document. It's emailed to me, yes, sir. And I'm going to, I think I can do this from here. Let me see if I can do this. So I want y'all to be able to see it. All right, so Zoom can see it, so I'll show it out here. So once you click on that envelope, it's gonna show you this, it's gonna say that you have some documents to sign. So earlier when we filled out those spots where we can make it a little personal, this is where that message would show, so you'd be able to see everything there. Now when you come down, all you're gonna do is click on the agree and continue. The reason I'm telling you this is that some of your clients may ask you how to do this. It can be very beneficial that we know how to do this as well, so we can walk them through. So the first thing that they're going to get is actually a mobile view. So whenever they hit finish and they come in there, it's a mobile view of that document. So it's broken down so that they can see it on the device that they are, are uh, signing on. So whether it be an iPad, whether it be the computer, whether it be their iPhone 9, whatever size phone it is, it fits to whatever screen it is. Now, whenever they get ready to sign, all they need to do is click on next. You're going to click on the initial here. It's going to have them sign, so you can have them sign anything. And you got to click on Adapt and Sign. And it's going to show the little initial there. Once they're done, they're going to hit Next. 
This is a very important part. Make sure that they hit finish. Though I see the yellow button at the top, with the yellow button that says finish. Whenever they click on finish, so they ask them if they want a copy. They don't have to get a copy. You can send them a copy if they want to sign up. They can. All they do to do is click on the thank you, and it says that they're done. So once they see the URL done screen, they are completely done with what they need to be done on um, the signature part. Anybody have any questions on that part? Yes, so it will send you an email and it will also show you inside of DocuSign here. So right now it says that it's still waiting. If I refresh this, you'll see now that it should be have a green checkbox. Checkbox. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it tells you that it's done. So this is how you know that it is done. The other feet, the other way to tell is if you click on documents, you might freak out for a minute because you remember only putting one document in there, but now there is three. Don't freak out. One of them is the, um, the original form that you filled out. So that's the one on the far right in this one. The middle one is the signed copy. So that is the signed copy with your client's information. And then the cert certification, certification, um, is purely just saying you saying that this was filled out um, with all the parameters in line that it is a secure signature. That's all that is saying. Now, if you want to clean up this this room, if if you so choose, I do so as well. I can click on these little bubbles we talked about earlier, and I can click on archive. It'll ask me to make sure that I want to archive them, and I can archive those documents and make sure my room. Anybody have any questions on that yeah, part? What certification is sent like with every document after the after it's signed? Yeah, so anytime that a document is signed, but it's the same. It's like the same thing. Basically the same thing, but it's just gonna tell you what the document was signed. Yeah. It's just gonna be um, it's gonna be pertaining to that document that was sent. So each time it does that, it's showing you that it was. Uh, signed securely and that it is encrypted and it's not going anywhere. That's all that is. You can always just. That's for, yeah, that doesn't go to your clients. That only goes to us. Yeah. So, with that being said, I'm going to show you how to get started on your templates so that you can put these documents in there at one time. Within a couple of clicks, you can actually have these auto filled with the information that you want done. So from this view, is everybody in the room view right now inside of the document section? Is that under current? Anybody, everybody else there? Good. So we're gonna click on the my docs at the very top right next to inbox. So once you click in here, you're gonna see right, right close to where you click, you should see form templates. Everybody see that? Everybody there? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get through since we are recording. Um, and you're gonna click on form templates. Everybody there? Everybody good? Cool. So what you're going to click on is you're going to click on the add button. I'm sorry, the form templates button. You're going to click on the form templates button. And then you're going to click on that <clears throat> once it loads. So you see right here it has this blue button and they've changed the words now. Now it's create form template. So whenever you click on this, you should see a very familiar window. Does everybody see the select form? So everything that you have access to inside of the room. So any document that you can put in the room, you can make a template for. Anything that is in this window right here can have a template made for it. So whether that's a one to four, that's an IABS, that's a general notice, whatever you wanna make a template for, you can. Now make sure that you're not making templates for documents that change 
And if you are, make sure you are leaving the ones or the sections that need to be filled out per transaction blank so that you can fill them. In. Make sure you're not putting today's date and then trying to send that to everybody. Leave that one blank and that'll be one of the ones you fill in. So I'm gonna come in here and I already have a couple of these made as you can see in the background. Yours just probably doesn't have any since this is probably the first time that I've seen this. But I have the information about broker services, the buyer template right here. So if I click on this edit button, you'll see another very familiar view. When we are filling out those documents, this is the same view you're gonna have here. So you can see at the bottom here, I filled in all this information for this document. So I have our broker, I have my name, all the contact information, Tasha's on there, uh, phone numbers, emails, everything is on there for this document. Everybody see that? So I have this saved. So if I go back to the room that I was in, so for example, if I go click on rooms and I go ahead and click on the most recent room that we created, we're gonna click on this one. And it's gonna be the same thing we did earlier. So you're gonna go to your documents and you're gonna click on add over here on the right-hand side. And in this case, I'm going to do the IBS, but as a listing. So I'm gonna go down to library, text association of realtors. I'm gonna go ahead and type in broker. And I'm gonna click on buyer here. Now, once I add the document in there, there's literally a couple of clicks to be able to fill that out. So first I'm gonna show you when I click on here that some of this will be filled out because it is pulled over from command because it is me as the agent. So you should see that the Keller Williams Lake name is there and that my name is there. You see that? Those are the only two things that are filled out on this document. If I go ahead and go back and I right click on that document, your fourth option down there is apply form template. Does everybody say that? All I need to do is click on it. And what's really cool and neat about DocuSign is it knows what document that you're on. So regardless if in those templates you named it to something else, it knows what document you built that on. So there's no way to put templates on the documents that don't need to be going on. So it only brings up the documents that are capable or compatible with it. So you see here, I have four different ones. All I'm gonna do is click on this first one here and I'm gonna click on apply. It's gonna quickly load. It's gonna say it's successfully done. And now when I click on this form and I scroll down to the bottom, everything will be filled out, including contact information and everything. Now, I will say that I have seen some more stuff coming out that we should start having um, this done for us. I don't know how quickly that's going to be done. Um, Right, but those so those will be yeah. Already, yeah. Already right, the, the, they're they're trying to work on a way to do that. Um, I haven't had an update about it yet since last week. Um, I will of course will let y'all know. Y'all will be the first ones to know as soon as it comes out. Um, I will post something on Facebook to make sure that y'all are aware of it. But this makes it a little bit easier. Um, as long as you fill those out, you spend a little bit of time making those templates. Um, Filling out documents becomes literally a couple of clicks to be able to get all those things. Now, um, remember, if for some reason you started filling this document out and you went, oh crap, I have a form template for it. Whenever you right click and you apply the form template, it will cancel out whatever is in those spaces. So if you had something there um, and there is something on the template in that same spot, the template were over or, or um, will erase it and put that one there. So that'll be the, the, the one that goes on top. Um, but if you leave them blank, if it's blank on the template, and you apply the template, that blank will still be there. So um, anybody have any questions? We have a little bit of time for a couple of questions if you have any. Again, if not, and this is very, very confusing, you'll be able to watch this class again tonight at six. It'll be the exact same thing. You'll be able to pause and go through. Um, that's how I'm gonna start doing it. Um, for those of you that are hearing my voice now, 
I will be updating you on Facebook on the group. So don't go to the Zoom link on the calendar. It will not work. It will not be on there. It will be on YouTube. So make sure you're not going to the calendar and going to the Zoom link. Go to the post that I put in the Facebook group. Yeah, the Facebook group that we have. I'm going to post so that anyone that hasn't seen it, there's two things that I'm trying to do to make sure that y'all can see what, what's tech related. I have a graphic now that says breaking tech news and has a has a computer screen on it. Anything you see that, any post, I would highly suggest reading those because it's any kind of tech updates or command updates or what's being rolled out. The other one is if you see the class that you're looking for as a YouTube link, more than likely it's gonna be a premiere. So tonight at six o'clock, it'll actually premiere on YouTube. And once it premieres, you'll be able to watch it for as long as time as you want to. You can go on there and click on it, whatever you need to. Right now it is my YouTube channel, yeah. yeah. And it is public, so you don't have to, as long as you click on that link, it'll go straight to it. And I have, uh, I do have the commission and compliance class from last week. It is on there as well. So if you have any questions about commission and compliance, last week's class that was re recorded is on YouTube for you to watch. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say, before you get the document signed, mm -hmm. is there a way that we can download it? So if you need to download it, all you need to do is come over here and select which one you want, and you can click on the download button, and it downloads the document. So if you, whenever you have it selected, when it has those the same thing you do when you were doing the envelope, you would just click on the one next to it that says download. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna need four ahas before we leave today. Okay. Do it. How do you get a Keller Williams YouTube? Yeah. So the link that I'm gonna put on in the group, you just be able to click on it and go straight to it. Yeah. You gotta subscribe. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, those, for, for future reference, all the evening classes will be on YouTube. So whenever they go, I'm gonna give the YouTube link and that's where you're gonna go. Oh. Facebook, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the evening classes, do not click on the Zoom link because no, nobody will be there. <laughs> all right, let me get, let me get uh, four ahas from today's class before we go. I have one, Josh. Yes, ma'am. The template, filling out the templates. I like that idea. I uh, attended this class a couple weeks back and I missed that part. So I'm glad I got to catch that this time around. <laughs> That's helpful. Perfect. Yeah, templates, it, it, I've, as you saw, I've started doing it in mine um, and I'm really loving being able to do a couple of them and it goes straight to me for me. So it's it's very, very easy. Let me get a couple more. Well, the rooms, going to the rooms, I didn't need to know that. The rooms? Yeah, so it, the, the same type of thing in dot loop, your loops or where your transactions are, your rooms inside DocuSign are where your stuff is. Yeah. Did you have some? That's good. Yeah, as long as, long as you are coming here and learning anything that we live in, uh, leave in this class, um, that is the greatest thing just to make sure that you learn something new. Yes, sir. So, as of right now, DocuSign or Doc, look, sorry, DocuSign is not a requirement. It is uh, not loop isn't going anywhere. You're more than welcome to use either one of them. Obviously, the um, intent is free to use DocuSign because of who owns dot loop. But at the end of the day, it's your business. It's your decision which one you want to choose. Right. Well, if y'all need, like I said, if y'all need to see this class again, it'll be on uh, at tonight at six and it'll be on YouTube from there on out. So you can come back through and watch it over and over again. I might edit it a couple of bits 
uh, to make it a little bit shorter um, for you. Um, but if y'all don't have any other questions, thank you for coming to class. If you need to see me after class, um, catch me and either text me or call me if you have any questions. And y'all have a good evening. Thanks, Josh. No problem.